No airplane in the world has a military record as long or as distinguished as the C-130 Hercules. Dependable, rugged, and versatile, the C-130 can haul over 40 tons of cargo, land on a dirt road, and fly in any weather conditions. That's why for over 50 years, the C-130 has had a huge role in every military hotspot on the globe. To learn more about how C-130s are built, How Stuff Works visited Lockheed Martin in Marietta, Georgia. What you see here is the B-1 building at Lockheed Martin. This is where C-130s and other large planes are assembled. The B-1 building has over 3 million square feet. That's the equivalent of 76 football fields of space. Because C-130s are so big, they're built in sections. These sections break down into the forward, mid, and aft fuselage, the body of the plane, and the left, right, and center wings. The assembly line is broken down into stations that are dedicated to building these sections. All sections of the plane are built simultaneously and move down a line as they get closer to completion. They are moving toward the final stage, which is body mate. This is where all of the large sections are joined together to become a whole plane. It takes over 60 mechanics several weeks to carefully assemble these pieces and build a C-130. Most of the large pieces of a C-130 are assembled in jigs. Jigs are kind of like a huge sewing pattern. Mechanics follow this pattern when assembling the piece. There are literally thousands of steps to building a C-130, and jigs help to make sure that it's all done right. The fuselage of the C-130 is where the cockpit, crew, passengers, and cargo are kept. It's roomy to say the least. In fact, in 1975, 452 people all piled into a C-130 to flee Vietnam at the end of the war. 32 of those people were stuffed into the cockpit. We're in the aft fuselage now on the C-130, and much like the forward fuselage, the process is, is similar, just a different piece of the airplane. We start with the assembly tool that's behind this position, where we put together the top panel and the left and right hand side panels. After we assemble it, it comes up into the pickup position, just like in the forward fuselage, and we begin to stuff it out with wiring assemblies, bracketry, and things that we couldn't install back in the jig. It's at this point that other things like windows and stabilizers are added to the fuselage. Mechanics have 15 days to complete this part of the construction. The mid-fuselage assembly is a whole other process that's handled by another team. It takes 54 days to build. And it's what we call stick building. In other words, we put it together one piece at a time. The C-130 has a wingspan of over 132 feet. To give you an idea, that's three and a half school buses long. The people think of the wings of an airplane as a wing is really three wings. There's a center wing, which is what attaches to the fuselage of the aircraft. Then there's a left hand and a right hand outer wing. The wings are in essence a set of ribs with strong support beams covered in a rigid skin. The ribs and support structures are carefully constructed in jigs, and then the outer shell pieces are drilled with holes and attached with fasteners. One thing a lot of folks don't know about the wing is they're actually fuel tanks. It's where the fuel for the airplane goes. And it's during this phase of construction that the fuel tanks and wing flaps are assembled and installed by mechanics. Now that the major part of the construction is complete, it's time to put it all together in body mate. This is the first time in the process that a new C-130 takes its distinctive shape. So after weeks of construction, there are now three huge pieces. The forward fuselage, the mid fuselage, and the aft fuselage, plus the three wings. Before they can put anything together, workers painstakingly clean the mating surface. Next, they apply a sticky, tar-like substance to the surface. Now the crew is ready to move the pieces together. The, the initial uh, activity is body made. So the, the parts are aligned, sealant is applied, bolts are installed, and the pieces are torqued together. That's really the day one, day two activities in the body made process. The crew now attaches the wings and installs a substantial amount of wire and plumbing. After that, the avionics and instruments go in, and then the finished plane is turned over to another department for extensive testing on the ground and in the air. After the new C-130 has passed all of its tests, it shipped off to take its place in the sky doing what C-130s do best, whatever is needed. 
So what's the best part of the whole process? Seeing it all go together. I think that's the coolest thing, seeing it all go together.